Breakthrough. Dead things must live. Say dead things must live. Because you don't believe it, tell your neighbor, dead things in your life must live. Find the other neighbor. Tell them dead things in your life must live. I don't know where you're at, but I'm at Luke chapter 8, and we will read about 16 verses from verse 40. So let us run, and I'm reading in the NIV. Today I will jump from different, uh, we'll see how it goes. And as is customary in this house, let us show our kids we also know how to read and write. Please don't disappoint me. In Jesus' name. Please be upstanding, clear your throat, and be ready to read like the soldier you are today. And let us read together from verse 40. Let us read aloud. One, two, three. And let us read together in unison. Kids, please stand. Please stand. And let's read together. So you guys know how to read. And I want you guys to be louder than your parents. Because I've been trying to teach them something. But I know you guys already got it. So let's read together from verse 40. One, two, three. For they were all expecting him. Let's go. Verse 41. Then a man named Jairus. Uh huh. Verse 42. Because his only daughter. Verse 43, let's go. Mm. Aha, uh -huh, verse 46. Somebody touched me. Mm -hmm. And now, then he said to her, Your faith has healed you. Go in peace. Verse 49. Hearing this, don't be afraid. Just believe she will be healed. Let's go to verse 51. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Children, verse 53. Read. Okay, parents, from verse 54. Aha, uh -huh, 56. Let's go, parents. Ha, who? Ha, parents. Read, parents. You may have your seats, Father. We thank you for the reading of your word. Every time we get into your word, there is light. And so, Father, we demand that light right now upon your people. May we receive the light, the illumination, the revelation that comes from your word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Today is Easter Sunday. And I want to let you know that breakthrough is guaranteed for every child of promise. Wow. There are four of them here. This is Easter Sunday and I said victory and breakthrough is guaranteed for every child of promise. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Dead things must live. Today I want you to know that breakthrough works with the heart of expectation. Breakthrough works with the heart of expectation. The scripture we read said, Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him. For they were all expectant. They were all expecting him. Then it says, Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house because his daughter, his only daughter, was sick. Eagerness to receive is a prerequisite of breakthrough. Eagerness to receive is a prerequisite of breakthrough. I want, uh, I want you guys to know one thing, that miracles are inevitable when there's an atmosphere of expectation. I don't know what your expectation is today, but I want to let you know that your breakthrough is inevitable. A miracle is inevitable where there is an atmosphere of expectation. I'm expectant today. I don't know about you, but I'm expectant today. You know, I like when we were asked to go around and describe Easter, and I met a young man called Eric, and Eric told me what he thinks about Easter and how he loves Easter. And I told him, Easter for me is so different because I gave my life to Christ over Easter. It was Easter Friday, the 27th of March, 1991. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And Easter for me is not just that time where you hang out with family and just have a great time. For me, Easter is the time I hang out with my family, my heavenly father. My expectation today is higher than yours. Let me just let you know. Because every Easter, God surprises me in one way or another. And this Easter is no different. And I am expectant. And that's why I said a miracle is almost inevitable when there's an atmosphere of expectation. Somebody say amen. amen. When Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him. He was returning to Galilee and a crowd was waiting. They had heard of the things that he had done. He had just calmed the storm. He had just healed a demon-possessed man. There was so much he had done and the crowd had heard. His words had already crossed over the shore. And so when he came to dock, people were already expectant. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18 says, For surely there is a thereafter, a hereafter. And your hope will not be cut off. Somebody, your hope will not be cut off. Why there are your hope will not be cut off. We must have expectation, y'all. We must have a level of expectation this morning. Psalms chapter 34 verse 5 says, They looked to him. And were radiant. And their faces were not ashamed. I don't know how desperate you are for the master this morning. Well, let's go back to our text. It talks about Jesus. He's crossed over. People have heard of the good works that he's done. And he's come across the shore. And the scripture says the crowd was pressing in on him. 
Who is your greatest celebrity? It's not a trick question. Don't start telling me Jesus. Huh? Denzel Washington. He's your greatest. That's the guy you look up to. Well done. No, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. When your celebrity shows up or comes into town, how do you behave? How do you behave when your celebrity shows up in town? Many of us lose our minds. Huh? Stop looking at me so sanctimoniously, you guys. I know you guys have celebrities. You can't even mention them here. I know, I know, I know. (laughs) But usually when a celebrity shows up in town, I remember when I was a young man, one person I used to really admire was Evander Holyfield. I used to really admire this man because I was like, man, this guy is one of the greatest boxers who's ever lived, and then he's a believer. My God. And then one day he showed up at the town I was going to school, and I said, I must find myself. Hey, you're looking good, man. I must find myself where that guy is. Because he comes from Atlanta, but man, he's flown all the way to Houston. I have to find out where he's at. Then I heard that he's going to be in a church nearby. And that day I went to church. The nearby church. To meet who? The person I admired. Let me just tell you, I was start struck. Because he had just come from having his ear beaten. (laughs) For those who know what happened. (laughs) And I looked at this man and I said, my God, look at this guy. But whenever a celebrity checks into town and Jesus had just showed up in Galilee and he was a celeb because people had heard of the mighty things that he had done. And people of all kinds showed up that day. And they said, my goodness, Jesus is in town. We must see him. We must meet him. We must hear him. And they rock up. And somebody, a leader from the synagogue, a teacher, Jairus, also heard that Jesus was in town. For him, it was not about celebrity status because let me tell you, the teachers of the law did not like Jesus. Because Jesus was coming to dispel everything these teachers had taught. And he was coming to say, you know what? You would rather operate with the truth and with the demonstration of power than just from head knowledge. And Jairus, desperate Jairus, comes running to Jesus. Now you've got to imagine Imagine when your favorite, when your favorite guy shows up, there's hardly any room to get anywhere near them because there are throngs of people all around this celebrity. You may think you're the only one who adores them, but there are thousands others, millions others who adore the same person. And so for Jairus, who is a teacher of the law, from the synagogue, for him to find his way all the way to the master and say, Master, Master, my daughter is ill and near death. Would you please come to my home? It took more than just sheer will. The embarrassment of a teacher of the law running to Jesus, number one. It's not something that you can wish away. Number two, you can imagine the crowd and him finding his way to the master and speaking to the master. And Jesus looked down at Jairus and seeing the desperation in his eyes, he said, I will come, let's go. Leaving behind all the crowds and the people who are cheering Jesus. And that's why I say, guys, these social media things, even to your social media, it's a watu. It's a watu. 
Because you're chasing after the crowd and not chasing after the master. And on their way, the scripture says, on their way to Jairus' house, a woman who had had an issue for 12 years, got up that morning and said, today is my day of victory. And said, I'm not going to suffer this embarrassment anymore. I think it's in Leviticus that talked about, is it Leviticus 18, 25? Just go to that scripture. Let's see if that's where it's at. Leviticus, Leviticus. No, that's not it. Chapter 15. Let's go to chapter 15, verses 25. Leviticus 15, 25. And it says, when a woman has a discharge of blood, for many days at a time, other than her monthly period, or has a discharge that continues beyond her period, she will be unclean as long as she has discharged, just as in the days of her period. Verse 26, let's go. Any bed she lies on while her discharge continues will be unclean, as is her bed during her monthly period, and anything she sits on will be unclean, as during her period. 27, and let's finish with this. Anyone who touches them will be unclean. They must wash their clothes and bathe with water and they will be unclean till evening. You've got to understand that the law was so harsh. And this woman woke up that day and said, for 12 years, I have been alone. For 12 years, people have looked at me as being unclean. For 12 years, any place I went, nobody wanted to associate themselves with me. For 12 years. 12 years is a long time. A long time. But that day she woke up and she said, today is my day of deliverance. Today is the day I'm going to meet the master. And unlike so many others who ran to meet their celebrity, she said, I have come to get my miracle. Because she created an atmosphere of expectation. And she ran over to the master. Again like Jairus. Finding these crowds of people all around Jesus. Knowing that people knew who she was. Chancing that at some point somebody will identify her. And say what are you doing here? You unclean person. She wiggled her way. Until she went and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus, do not forget, was on the way to Jairus' home. And I can only imagine Jairus wondering, Master, can we go please? Shall we make it to my house please before my daughter, my only daughter, And this woman touches the hem of his garment. And immediately she received her healing. Immediately. That's what the scripture says. Immediately it dried up. Scripture says she had gone. And you know what I like? I like to read it from the book of Luke. Because both Matthew and Mark had also given a similar account of this woman. But for Luke it is different because he was a doctor. And when a doctor says that he, she had spent, I know, I think it's in Mark. Mark said she had spent everything she had on the doctors, but nothing improved. In fact, she got worse. Historian said that a woman with this kind of issue had 11 different kinds of remedies, but she had gone through all 11 and nothing in her life had changed. Scripture says she had spent all her life savings. But nothing had changed. But then Dr. Luke had to pen it down and say immediately she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. The issue disappeared. It immediately stopped. It immediately stopped. <laughs> like Jairus. 
she had to fight her way through the crowd and find the master. And then she touched his garment. And immediately Jesus said he felt virtue leaving him. And he asked, who touched me? Who touched me in this place? And immediately his disciples said, Master, come on, man. Are you seeing how many of us are around this place? Everybody of us, every one of us has touched you. But he knew there was something. <sighs> one of the byproducts of our faith in God is positive expectation. Faith always incubates positive expectation. This expectation, we know it as hope. And hope is defined by someone as a positive expectation of something good that is about to happen. Who thinks or believes or knows that something good is about to happen to you? Who believes in this place something good is about to happen to you? <laughs> you have a positive expectation. You have a hope that something great is about to happen to happen to you. I want to submit to you that faith is strongest when hope and positive expectation is present. Number two, I want to run quickly. Breakthrough comes to those who press on in. Breakthrough comes to those who press on in. Galatians 6 verse 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. In due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 says this. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called also. To which you were also called. And have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Luke 8, 41 says, Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and pressed on him. Then a woman with an issue of blood 12 years came and pressed on him. Friends, your promise is guaranteed, but you must press on him. Your promise is guaranteed, but you must press on him. Press on him, somebody. Do not give up. Press on him. The woman decided within herself enough is enough. She was broke, busted, and disgusted. And she said, I am done. Unclean or not, she said, I am here today for my miracle. And she went after her miracle. Now I want to tell you how crazy. Let's go to the that same text, uh, Luke chapter 8, and go to verse 19. Just to depict to you how difficult it was for you to get to Jesus. Go to verse 19, and it says what? Now Jesus, let's read together. Some of you are falling asleep. Let's read together. They were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Who? Their mother and their brothers. They too were trying to get to Jesus, but because of the crowd, they couldn't get anywhere near. Folks, I'll tell you, today you must press on in. Jairus was not a brother to Jesus, but he managed to get to the master. The lady with the issue of blood, not even named in the Bible, she pressed on in. Because she said, I must get to Jesus. Tell your neighbor, press on in. Don't give up. Press on in. Press on in. Tell the other neighbor, press on in. Press on in. Winnie, God bless you. Press on in. Press on in. Press on in. This Easter Sunday, press on in. It is not done. It's not over. I like what the, the Americans say. They say, it's not over until the fat lady sings. 
Press on in, somebody. Hey, press on in. It's not over. Nkrote, <laughs> it is not over. Press on in. Finally, number three, breakthrough exposes. Breakthrough exposes. I want you to know that true revelation brings with it exposure. Exposure. Your life will testify of the revelation that you have received from God. I didn't say you will testify. I said your life will testify. Your life will testify. Your life will testify. Jesus asked, who touched me? And shaking and afraid, this lady came up, fell on his feet and said, Jesus, it was I. It was I. Jesus was not trying to embarrass this woman. Jesus was not coming or asking for this person so that he can say, shame on you for coming to get power from me without permission. Jesus said, who touched me? Because he wanted to look into the eyes of this woman and say, your faith has made you well. Jesus was so impressed with the level of faith that this woman had that he said, you know what? Let that girl who's about to die, die. I will get to her. But I must stop to recognize the faith of this woman. Scripture says without faith it is impossible to please God. Scripture says without faith it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God without faith. Jesus stopped and said, I need to know who touched me. Because he had not seen such great faith. Who stopped me? Who stopped me? Who touched me? Who touched me? He wanted to know. And he looked down at her eyes. Like he was telling her, the fact that you touched me and received your healing, don't run away. Let's make this thing public. So that you never ever go away thinking you stole your blessing. I want to free you right now and tell you, I recognize you. I see your pain and I have healed you and your faith is great. Paradventure Jesus continued and went over to Jairus' house. We would never have known the miracle that happened to this lady. If he never stopped and asked who touched me, nobody except Jesus would have known that a healing took place. But for your sake and my sake, Jesus stopped and asked, who touched me? And the Lord is saying today, I am available to touch you. I am available to touch you. The difference between you now and you in the future is a word from God. The difference between you now and you in the future is a word from God. I want you to know that God is in the business of blessing his creation. And you are his creation. He seeks whom he may bless today. Are you ready for your blessing today? Are you available to be shown mercy today? And finally, breakthrough requires faith. While Jesus was still speaking, Someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader, and said, your daughter is dead. Then he said, don't bother the teacher anymore. But hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just believe and she will be healed. I don't know about some of you, but there are situations in your life that people have even pronounced dead. What situation in your life have you also pronounced dead? Jesus says today, 
That thing is not dead. It is only asleep. But with my power, with my ability, with my resurrection power on this Easter Sunday, those things will come alive. Sir, I hear there are things in your life that are about to come alive. There are things in your life that are about to come alive. Things that you put in the back burner about three to five years ago, the Lord is saying he's bringing them back alive. On this Resurrection Sunday, there are things that Jesus is bringing back to life. He said, I will lay down my life. I will lay down my life. <laughs> I will lay down my life. That's what he said. And after three days, he arose. <laughs> after three days, he arose. I don't know what you've been suffering from for the last 12 years. The Lord is saying, healing is coming to that situation. Healing is coming to that relationship. Healing is coming to that business in the mighty name of Jesus. Healing is coming all around you right now in Jesus' name. Healing. 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 Healing, 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 healing. There are dead things that must come to life. Dead things must come to life. Dead things must come to life. Dead things must come to life. Come to life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to just take a minute and just Close your eyes wherever you're at. And the Lord is going to prompt you about a dead situation in your life where people have said, ah, this one, where it has reached. Nobody can touch this thing. And I want you to whisper something simple right now and tell the master, Father, in this situation, I speak to these dry bones that they may live again. That they may live again. Because the resurrection power is available right now. Speak to that situation right now. Jesus told the people who had come and said, do not bother the master anymore and he heard their thoughts and Jesus said do not be afraid I want to tell somebody today do not be afraid only believe just believe that's all it takes believe it will cost you nothing just believe only believe only believe says Jesus our master today and he's saying with the resurrection power that is resident within me only believe only believe only believe it may seem dead even to you you may have said I'm done but the master is saying today I am resurrecting things inside of you if you could only believe if you could only believe this morning the master is looking for people who would believe. Because he's saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the answer to every need that you may have. I have been the same. I am the same. I will be the same. In that situation over your children right now, Lord, we speak life. We speak life. We speak life. Those things that men have called dead, we speak life right now. And say in the name of Jesus, the name that is higher than any other name, 
may it come to life right now with the resurrection power that is resident inside of Jesus that lives inside of us right now we speak life to situations that seem hopeless right now we speak life to businesses that are shutting down right now and we say life the life of Jesus come through that business right now come through that marriage right now come through that relationship between a father and a child right now what is impossible with our God nothing we all experience the impossibilities of life a man had four friends and the four friends hearing that Jesus was in town lifted the man who was sick put him on a stretcher climbed up top of a building removed the roof and lowered the man to Jesus' presence friends every time you come before the presence of the Lord come with expectation because there is something good that is coming to somebody here in the mighty name of Jesus I hear testimonies all over this room of impossible situations that God has made possible. Father, we thank you because what man has called impossible, you call very possible. Because your word says that you come and use the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. You have two options today, ladies and gentlemen. You can accept your current status as God's will for your life and give up. Or you can break through and receive everything that God has that has been waiting for you. God is willing and able to do the miraculous today through your life and in your life. All you need to do is to declare. All you need to do is to say a testimony about that thing. And all you need to do is to find the presence of the Lord at all times. Create an atmosphere of expectation. When you go home this afternoon, create an atmosphere of expectation. Have the presence of the Lord in your house, in your room, in your living room. And say, Father, thank you. We invite you into this place. And then be expectant. Like all those crowds that were expectant. The story goes that Jesus gets to Jairus' house. And indeed, he says, this girl was only asleep. And he says, Talitha Kaum, little girl, rise up. Today, your little business has been called forth by Jesus. And has said, come out and have life. Your relationship, the Lord has reached out his hand. And for the second time that day, there was another touch from the master. Talitha Kaum. Come out, little girl. Come up, little girl. Scripture says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. You will never be put to shame. If you believe in Jesus, you will never be put to shame. 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 I want to say it until it drops in your spirit. You will never be put to shame. You will never be put to shame. You will never be put to shame. Shame is not your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. You will never be put to shame. If you believe. Only believe. Ah, thank you, Pastor Dawn. What a word. And the echo in my spirit is that if they knew what putting Jesus on the cross would have resulted into, 
they wouldn't have done it from the get-go. Amen? Tell your neighbor, the, the Lord. Tell your neighbor, the Lord is about to make a spectacle. <laughs> As we prepare to give, there's this song that we sing, I will not settle for less. Because I know he has done more than enough for me. I will not settle for less as we prepare to give. I will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more than found in you come on let's sing it together say and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never and we will never settle for less we know Father, we receive the giving of your people, that the house of the Lord shall never lack, but there will also be more so that we can go from our Jerusalem to Samaria to Judea and to the uttermost parts of the world. Thank you for the expectation that is tied to the word that has been spoken to us, that even our resources are part of the overall plan that Jesus had. You desire that we prosper and be in good health, even as our souls prosper. So we receive the total work of the resurrection power, even in the works of our hands, in the businesses that you've given us, in the opportunities we are trusting you for, in the expansions that we are looking forward to within Kenya and beyond, so that we will be blessed like Isaac was blessed. And like Pastor Don has taught, it's our lives that will become a testimony. We will not need to testify because of the impact we are having in the city and beyond. So receive all the glory, receive all the honor. May our offerings be a sweet-smelling aroma to you, even on this Resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. And God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to church. We may stand for the benediction. Amen. Lift up your hands and may the Lord bless you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord distinguish you from the crowd in this coming week. As you press on to him, may he acknowledge your touch that is reciprocated by his virtue in everything that you trust him for this week. May he do it so that he can glorify himself through your life. And many will testify that this who went through crucifixion was surely the son of God. May people testify that you are surely a child of God in this coming week and the remaining part of April. And may the Lord go before you. May the Lord go behind you. May the Lord go beside you. And may indeed his hand of blessing be upon you in this week. And may you come with a testimony next Sunday for the glory and honor of his name. Come on, give God a mighty shout even as you enter the week with breakthrough. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, each one reach one. Hey, 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 hey,